welcome back to Ben's channel. Today I'll be making an axe sheath for one of Ben's axes and I thought I'll just take you along and show you like how to make a basic axe sheath. So um, some basic tools that you will need um, to punch the holes through the leather to sew it properly. I have these really handy little metal um, DIY diamond lacing stitching chisels. You can see the description here. I just bought them off Amazon and they were fairly cheap and you can use one stance or um, several in a row. I usually only use one or two at any one point. Um, the next thing is um, this little all here widens up the holes so in case they're a little bit tight for really thick leather or if you've um, done quite like three um, levels of leather, leather together, they can be quite thick to get the needle through. So this really helps and obviously makes quite thick holes all the way down if you needed to. I've got this really thick leather yarn here. I think it's 100% polyester. Got this off Amazon as well. It's just so much more, it's so much better to use for leather work than using normal thread because the normal thread rips, speaking out of experience. So I just have a pair of scissors that are quite sharp, the Fiskars, they can help cutting around the edge of leathers. I've got this mower which is really handy because it's got a chisel side, a uh, chisel top and a side which is really sharp again if you want to cut your leather into shapes. I've got a hole puncher here that just gets the holes through. If you want to get a leather string at the end to kind of show you how to make the um, leather string and I've got some here as well. And yeah, so I usually just put that underneath when I make, uh, when I use the chisels, just like that with the hammer, that's quite handy. So here I've got my large piece of leather. I obviously try to be as economical as possible with this. So I try to go really on the edges because you know, I don't want to have much wastage. So, but sometimes it has to be quite important that you check that on the other side, there is no cuttings or markings. So obviously this side is more shiny. And I usually draw on this side because it will be the inside. So in case there's any like markings that I didn't cut out properly, um, that you won't see them. And you want to make sure there is no that's like quite an uneven, uh, quite an even piece. So you don't have any um, hills and valleys going on in the leather. So with this, um, I'm basically just going to give myself an idea how far in the axe sheaf will be. So I need to move it down just a slight bit and I'm going to draw around the axe head just to give myself an idea how far down it is. So this isn't anything particularly fancy, it's supposed to just protect the axe um, from just normal work. So it won't be particularly 100% very beautiful and accurate and geometrical. So this kind of gives me an idea where the axe head is going to lie now. So what I'm going to do is I'm sort of judge a nice sort of edge, um, probably about two centimeters. And I just draw around it. Again, you don't need to measure anything. You just need to sort of get an idea how big your axe is going to be. I'd rather draw them too thick because you can be very surprised how like much leather you need to still protect the um, blade and how much it squeezes in the leather. So it's better to go a little bit bigger than you think rather than not having enough space in the axe sheath at the end and all that work you invested was just all for nothing. So. I'm just going to do a couple of corrections and then cut out. So I've made a couple of corrections just to get similar sort of thickness on each side and that all the corners are protected. I'm actually going to go ahead and just what I said earlier, I'm just going to add a little bit more to the edge in the front. If I feel like it's going to be too thick later on, I can just trim it off. It's not going to be a problem. Um, yeah, so now we're just going to cut this out. I'm gonna use um, scissors for that because it's got like quite a lot of like round 
um, bit so I'm just gonna get them going like this You can tell that they're quite sharp, you can't just use your ordinary kitchen scissors for that unless you sharpen them before quite nicely. Um, because leather is really hard to cut. If you ever had to um, use um, a knife on animal skin or even a um, fish, you'll find that the skin is actually really tough and you can kind of get an idea, um, you know, how tough that skin is and then it gets even obviously more harder and mature um, through the leathering process, through the tanning process, sorry. So yeah, I'm just trying to get like the edge sort of nice and smooth. Um, this leather isn't the most beautiful. Um, I got this leather for free. Um, ben got it for me um, from work. So it has a couple of stains on it, but again, um, we're quite happy with the look of this. Um, it does not have any mold stains, so if, in case you're wondering, it's just um, leather markings um, and stains within the um, tanning process. You can stain leather as well, so if we would be particularly concerned about the look of this right now, we could just go ahead and um, stain it. Um, especially if it's natural tan leather, so sort of like this color here. Once you've got, once you've made your first act sheet, if you really feel a lot more comfortable with making the next one, I think most of the time it's better to just go and do it rather than get too worried about it because it's such a value product and all that. So I think it's better to just sit down and make one and then kind of go with your improvement from then. So I've just cut this out from here. So obviously now I need to make the opposite side for the other side of the axe. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this over. Make sure, you know, I've got like a nice um, straight edge just here. I'm just going to line that up because, you know, when you work with leather, you find that your hand gets quite tired after a while of cutting all. So any cut you can avoid having to make, it's always really good. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and draw this on again and I'll just cut out again. So now I have the two sides, just show you. The leather was bent a little bit here so that's why where that bend comes from but it will be fine after a while, we'll just um, get straightened out by the axe weight. Um, I'm just making sure that they align quite nicely. Um, obviously it's a bit harder to get the perfect shape even with scissors um, when you cut leather because it's such a tough material. Um, but you can see they're pretty much the same. There we go. So one of the next things we need to do is obviously if you would not put your axe in here and I've got stitching here, you would use it twice probably and then you would cut the stitching immediately. So what you need to do is you need to protect, create a protective layer for your stitching in here so the axe doesn't cut your stitching. So what you want to do is like a really sort of beginner error I did was I only put this leather along here to have to protect your blade. But if you think about it probably better use this side. If you think about it, putting your axe in, where's it gonna put a lot of stress on? It'll be on here, and it might even be on the top depending on how you're gonna put this sheaf on. So one of the good, really good practices, what you can do is you can put the leather everywhere, the third layer in the middle, everywhere where your stitching is. So instead of just having the stitching, uh, having the leather, the third layer, just here, have it the entire bit to protect your entire stitching. So there are a couple of different things you can do. You can just go 
top and the front where the blade is or you can do um, blade and bottom. Um, it's not really recommended to do it all the way around because it'll be really hard to fit your axe and it will probably almost be impossible to do. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'll draw the axe protector what I've got so far on here and then I'll cut out and then we've got our third layer. So you want to again make it quite thick, basically similar to what this looks like. So you basically want to have a leather strip in here that maybe goes all the way to about here. So you can still get your axe in and out quite easily, but it gives your blade quite good protection. And obviously you want your stitching to be quite a good um, level of protection as well. I'm happy enough to do to sketch this on just by hand, but if you want this to look really nice and to be really accurate, what you could do is you could, you could just get a ruler and just make dots, you know, every couple of centimeters or inches, um, and um, you know, just have the same distance every single time. But I'm just happy enough just to draw on like this. So I sometimes quite like having a little bit more of a heel because I can cut that off at the end. Um, but you know, with leather you obviously can't glue it back on so you rather want to have excess than not enough. So again, I'm just gonna probably sketch it all the way to here. This is gonna be far too much but I'll cut it off in a bit to have a better idea um, what it's gonna look like. So I'll just cut this out again. So I've got all my three pieces here now. I'm just gonna sort of get an idea um, how nicely they align. You can see I actually again cut quite generous generously around the edges because again I can just cut it off in case it's too much. So I'm just using the one where I've got the axe profile drawn on. So I'm just putting it on. It's kind of getting a feel for the edges and just lining it up. And this is quite good for getting a general idea um, what the axe will look like when you put it into the sheath. So at the moment, um, you can see that each of these corners are touching the sheath, um, the third mid layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out these corners just slightly so the axe, sheath, uh, the axe can just go in a little bit nicer and the sheath just fits a little bit more snugly. Again, if you want to be really accurate, you can draw this on and then have really perfect aligned. I'm more into getting the job done, so I'm more interested in that than having it, again, perfectly looking. Um, you know, every single time, every time, every now and then I would make like quite a nice sheath and then put a little bit more effort in. But most of the time I just want to get them done because you've probably noticed Ben's got quite a large axe collection. So I'd rather, you know, get as much done as possible than um, making them look beautiful every single time. So now this fits quite nicely. You can see there is enough room there. And there is also enough room still between the blade and the top, uh, sorry, the mid layer. So this is really quite important that you don't have it, have this edge touching the blade because if you think about it, those three layers are going to press down quite hard together and for this blade to actually reach that mid layer, which is just about here, there's, you know, it's quite hard to get it all the way in there. So just leave it a little bit, like a little bit of a distance there and it will fit nice and snugly. So I'm just gonna keep this on a little longer just until I have an idea. I might just cut the chain a bit off because we definitely don't need that bit. 
but um, I'm just going to keep the tail just a little bit longer, I might cut in just slightly. So the next bit, what we're going to do is um, I basically start hole punching. So there's two options. It depends how much time, again, you want to invest and how nicely you want this to look. I'm just going to show you two examples. So if you hole punch them all at the same time, you take the entire bundle and then just do this. Um, what's going to happen is because the leather is really thick, you end up with um, the bottom layer not being perfectly aligned. And then this happens. So you have like loads of zigzag moving, which, you know, is fine. It, it's practical. It's not going to be the most beautiful job, but it does the job. So if you want it to be more like this, where the line, where the stitching is perfectly in a straight line all the way around, you have to do each layer separately. And in order to get all the holes aligned, you need to mark the holes each time and each time get the um, right hit. So I'm gonna show you how to do this one today because I think this is quite self-explanatory. Just use all three layers at the same time and hole punch them through. Um, so we're just going to get this done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this side because I have a really good idea um, where the axe blade is and where um, this is. So what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to mark um, the inside where you can see sort of... Um, mid layer I'm not too worried about all the black marker signs inside because um, we're not going to see that ever again really so I'm really not worried about it at all so I have this site now here and I'm just going to start hole punching I personally like being a little bit more accurate so I tend to use the two needles instead of the four or six, sorry I had to count there. Um, so just to be a little bit more accurate and to have a better idea. Now there's a sweet spot, you don't want to, the stitching right at the edge because this side will be all floppy. If you do it the other way around, this will be all really snug, but this side, the outside will be quite floppy again. So you wanna put it in the middle and on an axe sheave where, you know, if you feel like this, you've cut this quite thick, you know, the mid layer, there it is. If this is quite thick, you might actually either want to reduce it or do double stitching. So do two lines of stitching. So I'm just going to sort of judge the center of this. Just remember that's the line there. And to start hole punching. You don't need a cute little hammer, you can just use a larger hammer as well for this. So if you live in a flat, you might want to make sure that your downstairs neighbour isn't in, just to be less annoying. As you can tell, it's just a little bit noisier. So what I'm doing here is I punch two holes and just to have the perfect stitching again. So the last hole there, I basically turn around and just hole punch it like this. So this will mean every single time I have the same distance between each hole for the stitching, which make it look really nice and even. Um, you can also obviously just move it on like this, but you might not get it perfectly aligned. So I'm more than happy enough to just do this. So I've punched holes all the way around, but see here at the end where that little tail is of the mid layer, I didn't punch it all the way through, so I only punched it to about here 
because I think this will be sufficient to keep the axe sheath in. So what I'll do later on is I'll just cut the tail off, um, you know, or stance another hole if I need to. So the next thing, if you want to be, you know, really nice and accurate and do every single layer on its own, you want to line this up nicely. And then you want to mark each hole onto this. And then you want to punch them through. So we're just making sure that's all nicely aligned. So what I'm going to use now actually is this. So this little tool is really handy for marking holes as well. Because I already have those holes here so I only need a little dot. So I'm basically just doing this all the way around and you will see it stands as quite nice little holes, little markings in. And I don't need a pen or anything and this is quite accurate. So I'll just do all this um, all the way around and then um, we can start stancing out the holes for the mid layer. This tool normally is actually to punch holes through just by pushing and you will feel actually how far this can go down into the leather. Although it is quite thick you can hear the sound that it really pushes quite deep into it. I like getting it all the way around just to have it perfectly aligned but what you can also do is um, you know you can do every second hole or so because remember if you use this um, chisel for it you already know that all the distances are perfect so what we're going to do now is we're going to punch the holes in but you can see what happened is this leather was bent quite badly before I started so it's quite hard to align all the pieces together so I started off wonky so I had to correct it so I'm going to start actually at the bottom bit now to punch all the holes and then I can follow still the line all the way to the top. I don't want to punch the wrong holes. So I'm just going to, just as earlier, now this is actually quite handy because you're basically just looking for the holes and then punching it through. But just like earlier, I'm just going to tap it and then just punch a hole through. So this is actually what it looks like from the other side and it's quite a good depth like this to punch it through. And I'll just pull it out. So you can see here, I just um, punched all the holes on the mid layer. So the next step is um, lining it up with the bottom side of the axe sheath. And then again, just punching all the holes through. And obviously first marking them again so it'll be easier to get the thread through if they're 100% accurate. Again the leather is you know, bent so it's a bit harder to get them perfectly matching but I'm just gonna start getting them through. So now we've got all our three layers, so it's just about stitching them together now. I was gonna say, I forgot to mention this earlier, if you feel like you can't see where the, where the top and the bottom is in this piece, it can be really advan of an advantage to just draw yourself an arrow. Just so you know where the top is and do the same on the other piece. I'm happy enough to align them because I know the bottom edge, you know, has a little bit of a toe. So, 
put all three pieces together here now. I'm not so worried, like, I'll just leave it like this right now. It's more about getting the thread cut. So what we're actually going to use is we're going to use a saddle stitch. So we're basically going to use two needles, one on each side, and then stitching through the holes like this. So for that, we're obviously going to need quite a bit of thread. So I've not really judged the perfect length for the thread to make this, but I like using about four times the length of the stitching just obviously I don't want to waste too much of it so that gives me a good idea and then one of the worst pains ever is not having enough thread so I just like being I just like being a little bit safer and just cut a little bit extra, probably like five times in total. So now I have two needles. Now this isn't a special needle, it's just bent at the top. So don't worry about it. Like you don't need a particularly sharp needle, it can be quite blunt. You don't need to put holes anywhere. Ideally you want them to be blunt as well. Because you don't want to, when going back through, you don't want to constantly pierce the thread. So we'll make it really hard to pull it tight. So um, you can do a knot. I find that sometimes when you do a knot, it creates a bigger end. And then it's quite hard to get it through all the holes. So I like just leaving it like this and just going with the risk that you might have to thread the needle a couple more times. So just like this. So I'll show you now why I think this is a really valuable tool and it makes your life a lot easier. It's because these holes can be quite tiny. So having um, just a tool that can, well, that's a bit over the top. So don't punch them that hot, that big, but you can basically just use it to make the holes a little bit bigger. like this and then I like just doing a couple at the start like this because it'll just make my life a little bit easier to get started So now I'm going to put the needle through and we don't need to worry about aligning this perfectly because we're just going to thread it through now. Now one of the things that's quite an advantage what you can also do is you can glue all three leathers, uh, leather pieces together. That is really good to hold in place nicely and just to give it extra stability. I don't have leather glue on hand right now and I'd rather want to show you how to make, you know, an easy way to do this and you don't need many tools for this. So um, most people probably don't have leather um, glue on hand. So I'd rather do it this way. So it's really important when you now get all the three leather pieces together that you line up your thread and that you have the thread up here on the top just perfectly on center because um, you need equal amounts on both sides um, for the stitching. So now I'm going to take this needle from this side and just push it through here. So this is um, waxed thread. Um, it comes pre-waxed. Pre um, you can also use candle wax, especially while doing this. I sometimes find that the thread just comes undone a little bit and then I get a candle and just pull it through a little bit as well. Because what's going to happen if you just ignore this is you're basically constantly piercing the thread and then when you want to pull it tight, um, it's just not going to be the same. 
Now, there are plenty of more leather tools available. There are really nice tools where you can sync the stitching to just make it last longer so there's not so much stress on it. Um, I don't have that tool and, um, you know, I'm sure it does a really great job, but I find that this works okay. I think the oldest axe sheaf I've made is probably about four or five years old and it's lasted perfectly fine. So now you can see um, it's starting to get a bit tough to pull the needle through. I sometimes like using the wood just to tap the needle through a little bit easier and then it comes through. If you feel like the holes are too tight, just use the awl again. So I might just use it again just to punch out, punch the holes through. Just while you're at the start, make sure you align all the holes perfectly because you don't want to start off with third hole here and then punch through the middle layer and fourth hole and make it all go wonky. So I'm just widening the holes for the needle to fit through easier. And it really is worth it just to do that extra couple of minutes of um, hole widening rather than just stancing them through. Try not to stop yourself. So yeah, so I'm just going to continue putting the needles through like this pulling it tight. I like pulling a little bit tight and then when I've got both needles in like this I'll just pull it straight like this and then I'll just do the next one. This is a really nice kind of work you want to do maybe in the afternoon after lunch. Just quite nice relaxing work or you can do this after dinner, it's, you know, or whenever you obviously like working. Um, but I find this quite, you know, it's, it doesn't take much um, energy. It's just quite relaxing. So now I've finished the entire length of the stitching. Unfortunately, the top of one of my needles broke off. So the last bit, I had to constantly change the needle, which was a little bit annoying. But basically I finished all the way through. Then the thread from this side I just put into the last hole, pulled it through like this. And now I'm gonna do a similar thing with this. I'm basically just gonna pull it through the thread here. And then just pull both tight and then make a knot. There we go. So I'm just going to cut this off here. And what you can do is you can get a lighter and just melt this in and this will stain quite nicely. Um, you can see the stitching is really nice and even on the sides. Um, this just makes it look a little bit nicer. So before you do the knot and the, you know, getting rid of the thread sort of thing, you want to make sure you fit it. I just fitted it while the camera was off, so I knew it was fine. So it fits fine. Fits nice and snug. I could have probably made it a little bit higher up here, but I'm happy enough with this. So. The next step is you obviously want your sheaf to stay on your axe. So one of the th sort of simple ways to do this is to just put two holes, one there, one there, and put string through it. I like that method, it's relatively quick. You can also be really fancy, put a buckle on here, put a string all the way around, um, so on that side, and put it through and take it through the buckle. That's also really nice. Um, but more labour intensive way to create a closure for your axe. 
wax sheath. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hole puncher here and um, I'm just going to get the thread I'm going to use for this axe. I'm not going to use the nice fancy ones I showed earlier on camera. I just have some couple of offcuts here. Um, that's a short, that's a short one. So one of the things you want to do is um, when you punch the hole, you obviously want this to be able to go through the hole, right? So you want to see just ever so slightly smaller. You can see that fits quite nicely. So another really good tip as well is when you want to hold, like put a hole through this, use another piece of leather underneath because it will be much easier to punch the hole through. So I'm just going to place it just about here. And then you press down hard. And that's it. And the other side. So for the other side, what I normally do is I get my little tool. Because you want it to be on the same. You can put a hole in the middle. You can go around it so you've got a good idea where it is. And then you just basically find this bit here, make sure it's nicely aligned, and you can press down again. This requires a bit of strength, but it's much easier to do it that way with having another piece of leather underneath. So what you can also do is you can use this hole, just in case you now find that this might be a little bit tight. You just use this to widen the hole out a little bit. This kind of stops you from having to re-punch the hole, which can be a bit annoying. So, what I also like doing is just cut a slight pointer into it. Makes it a little bit easier to get the hole through. Try not to cut your fingers. So yeah, so I'm just going to put this through here. And then make a knot. So this is just to get an idea how um, long that string is, so you obviously don't want it to be overhanging. So one of the things I do is I kind of just make sure you can basically just push it over the axe sheaf like this. So, you know, you can have a hanging over. So this is quite a good, you know, length. So I might tuck out just a slight bit. And then make a knot. So yeah, now it's just cutting off these little tails. See, after you pull this really nice and tight. So there we've got the axe sheath. Has a nice sort of tidy stitching. Now if you look really closely, you can probably see the edge is slightly wonky. One of the things you can do now if you have like a belt sander, you can basically just grind this off nicely. You can also use a sharp knife just to basically trim off the edges, just like this, to have it really nice and smooth. Um, I'm not too worried about it, I think it's pretty enough this way. Um, let Ben know whether you like this special content, this special episode. 
and um, like and subscribe.